Okay, welcome back again. So let's keep talking about the same setup as before. We have a bunch of vectors, V1, V2, Vk, and they span sub subspace of Rn. So last time we learned about the notion of linear dependence and linear independence. And the definition was that the vectors V1 through Vk, that list of vectors, is called linearly dependent if there is a linear relationship like this one between them, other than the obvious one where all the c's are zero. And we learned that having the v's be linearly independent is usually better because when the v's are linearly independent, then each element of the subspace has one unique representation as a linear combination of the v's. Whereas if the v's are linearly dependent, then in the same element of our subspace may have many different representations. So what I'm going to tell you now in this lecture is that you can start with a list of vectors which is linearly dependent, so which has this problem, and you can remove elements from it. You can pare it down and make it shorter until it becomes linearly independent while still spanning the same space. So I'm going to tell you about a method to shorten your list of spanning vectors, to knock vectors out of it and make there be fewer of them until you get a linearly independent spanning list. Okay, that's the game plan. Removing vectors from our list until there are no longer any linear dependencies. So, here is the starting observation. Suppose we have some linear relation, and suppose that the coefficient ck is non-zero. Remember, we are assuming that at least one of the c's is non-zero. So if ck is non-zero, then we can move ck vk to the other side of the equation and divide through by ck to get a formula expressing vk as a linear combination of the other vectors. And I wrote this out for the case where ck is non-zero, but if some other cj is non-zero, then we can express vj as a linear combination of the other vectors v. So here's an example. It's an example that was also on our previous lecture. So here's a list of vectors, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. We computed last time that there is a linear relation between these vectors, as shown on the equation. And so these vectors are linearly dependent. And, and we can rewrite that, just put 3, 2, 1 on the other side, to express 3, 2, 1 as a linear combination of the other two vectors. OK, why is this important? This is important because we can use it to rewrite our subspace as a span of a shorter list. So let's keep going with this example. Suppose we have some vector that is in the span of 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1, the same vectors from our example. So that means there are some coefficients such that, yeah, x, y, z is p times the first vector plus q times the second vector plus r times the third vector. Well, we could take that third vector and rewrite it in terms of the other two vectors. So what happened here is I just replaced 3, 2, 1 by the linear combination of the other two vectors that we found on the previous slide. And rearranging this, we see that x, y, z is also a linear combination of the first vector and the second vector without having to use 3, 2, 1. And so the span of this list of three vectors is the same as the span of just the first two vectors. And now I'm going to say with letters and symbols, what I just did with numbers in my example, whenever we have a linear dependency, 
we could rewrite one of the vj as a linear combination of the other v's and use that to conclude that the span of the whole big list of v's is the same as the span of the list where I have deleted that extra vector vj. So proceeding this way, whenever we have a linear dependency, we can use that linear dependency to throw a vector out of the list while keeping the span the same, until eventually we will have written our subspace as a span of a linearly independent set of vectors. And so just to repeat that before I go to the next paragraph, by using this trick over and over, we can eliminate vectors from our list until we have written our subspace as the span of a linearly independent set of vectors. And we have a word for that concept. If we have written our subspace V as the span of some list of vectors, and that list is linearly independent, then we say that that list is a basis of the subspace V. So what I've just been discussing is a method where I can take a spanning set, a set of vectors that spans our subspace capital V and turn it into a basis. Okay, I'm about to do a long example of this. There is going to be a lot of math. The whole thing is math, sorry. There's gonna be a lot of arithmetic. I'm gonna be doing a bunch of computations. But the point is, I'm going to take this list of five vectors, which span some space inside R3, and I'm going to shorten this list down to a much shorter list of vectors which span the same subspace of R3. So now I'm gonna do the details, but that's the point. The point is I wanna take vectors out of this list and get a shorter list which has the same span. So I'm going to form these five vectors up into a matrix. So the columns of this matrix are the vectors that you see over here. First column is first vector, second column is second vector, and so forth. And then I'm going to row reduce that matrix, and the reason I'm row reducing is because I want to find linear dependencies. So I see that my row reduced matrix has three free columns, three columns that are not pivot columns. So I'm circling them in blue. Here circled in blue, these are the free columns. And each of those three columns gives us an element of the kernel. I'm gonna skip over this step a bit because we've talked about it other times like in the uh, in lecture 4a when I talked about the kernel. And I've written these as row vectors with a little transpose just so they'll fit on the slide better. I was short on vertical space. Okay. Each of those elements of the kernel gives us a linear dependency or a linear relationship between our vectors. So for example, this first element of the kernel, negative three, one, zero, 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 tells us that negative three times the first vector is going to, uh, plus the second vector is going to be zero. And you can check, that's true. And similarly, negative one, zero, negative one, one, zero, tells us that the first vector and the second vector, if I take negative the first vector, sorry, let me start over. Negative one, zero, negative one, one, zero, tells us that negative the first vector plus negative the third vector plus positive the fourth vector is going to be zero. And similarly, negative three, zero, two, zero, one, tells us that negative three times the first vector plus two times the third vector plus the fifth vector is going to be zero. So we have three linear relations, one that comes from each free column. And we can rewrite those linear relations in order to express the free columns as linear combinations of the, sorry, to express these three columns as linear combinations of the other two columns. So we started out with five vectors and we wrote three of them as linear combinations of the other two. 
So on the next slide, I'm going to clear away all of this work from the middle and just keep the top and the bottom row, which are all the facts we're going to need now. So we're thinking about the span of these five vectors at R3. And we've noticed that three of these vectors can be written as linear combinations of the other two. So because these can be written, because 3, 6, 12 is a linear combination of the other vectors, we can eliminate 3, 6, 12 from our list. And because 2, 2, 6 is a linear combination of 1, 2, 4, and 1, 0, 2, we can eliminate 2, 2, 6 from our list. And because 1, 6, 8 is a linear combination of 1, 2, 4, and 1, 0, 2, we can eliminate 1, 6, 8 from our list. So we see that the span of these five vectors is the same as just the span of these surviving two. And here's a thing, to, and there's a lot of details here. Here's a thing to memorize. I find it very worth memorizing. The vectors which survived the process, the first and the third vector, were the ones that were still alive at the end. Here they are in this position and this position. They were in the positions that corresponded to the pivot columns at the end of our row reduction. The vectors that were in the positions corresponding to the free columns got crossed out. And so what we have just shown is that 1, 2, 4, 1, 0, 2 is a linearly independent set of vectors, which has the same span as this big list of five vectors that I started out with. And so, remember span, we could also call that image. We have shown that these two vectors are a basis for the image of this three by five matrix. And in general, that is how you compute a basis of an image of a matrix. Okay, I'm going to stop for now. I hope you have a good night or a good morning or a good weekend and enjoy some good math.